So the last part of chapter three is, about, is the question, why is the ratio scale called by that name? Well, that question, of course, makes no sense unless I gave you a little bit of a lecture about different types of scale. So without writing too much on the board, I'm going to talk about it, and the answer will be found on the board, even though that is not exactly right. I'll just come clarify that. Um, okay, where's, where's Kim? Yes. What, what question were you answering? You said, why is it class called statistics? Yeah. Again, okay, just to be uh, all due respect, uh, some of it is all right. But it doesn't really, you're, just, you're giving me a question. What's the definition of a statistic and parameter? That's a good definition, but then why is it class called statistics? You don't really, but that, that really answers the question. Okay. Getting back to, um, now it's hot, where is, where is, I can, you tell, this picture is, I mean, that's recording over here? You know, how far do I have? Mm -hmm. um, from there, from that writing, to a little, no, over more, towards this element. The question, from the beginning of the question. From here to here, it's being recorded? Yeah, from so, there to oh. about over here. Oh, it is being, this is, this is seeing it, okay. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to talk about in chapter one before we jump ahead to chapter three is the question about uh, this different kinds of scales. So again, let me give you a stand back and give you a little bit of a perspective on it, which is always valuable. Um, we have, we're gonna be basically, it doesn't sound too exciting, but in a certain, of course it is useful, it is exciting. We're basically gonna spend the entire term learning how to analyze different kinds of data. Interpret data, analyze data, summarize data. And, um, so but since we're going to be dealing with data, the question is, where does the data come from? The answer, data comes from making a measurement. You measure somebody's height, you measure somebody's weight, you measure somebody's income. But when you measure something, you're basically using a scale. If you're measuring somebody's weight, you're putting on a weight scale. If you're measuring somebody's height, you're using a ruler. Now, these different scales have different properties. And based on the properties, it's going to lead to different kinds of data. So for example, some kind of data simply puts somebody into a category. Are you a male or female? That's a kind of a measurement, but it's not a number. So there are different kinds of scales. A ruler produces a number. So there are different kinds of scales, and these scales have different properties, and these properties lead to different kinds of data, and the different kinds of data lead to different kinds of formulas. So for example, if you're measuring if somebody drives a, a GM or a Honda, and you want to do some kind of calculation, you can use one kind of formula. If you're analyzing somebody's weight or somebody's height, you can use a different kind of formula. So in a certain sense, this stuff is practical in that you need to know where the data comes from to help you decide which formula to use in real life. It's not going to be that complicated in reality in the class, but a real life, a, you know, a professional statistician has to know where the numbers are coming from. So for that reason, we're going to talk a little bit about the scales. And in order to talk about the scales, we have to first talk about the properties of the scales. So the next part of the lecture is about properties of scales. So the properties of scales, I'm sorry to repeat that. It goes as far as the part. Okay. Just up to where you wrote. Okay, properties of scale. So, and the properties are, and I'm going to do this a little fast because we all, most of this again is not on the <coughs> test, just the last piece of it is on the test. The properties of scale, it turns out there are three of them. And the book talks about this page 7, 8, 9, 10. You'll find that if you want to read this in detail. Uh, we call this magnitude. Around. You find that true? The security people are very helpful. Being sarcastic? No, no, man. Really? They're not helpful. Really, the only bad time. Once we, those you had me last term, know that I give sometimes a project, an extra credit project, where people take a water bottle and and uh, so they once they once arrested one of my students. <laughs> I didn't want to do that. Okay, but uh, tip for that problem. All right, magnitude uh, equal interval. Like for example, if your car, if you need a boost for your car, they, they, they give you a boost. Or for example, if, you need, if it's raining, they take you for one point. They don't do that for you guys? No. No? Anybody have any good experience with security? No, really? Surprise. <coughs> they really try to be you know, user-friendly around here. Equal intervals and 
absolute zero. And again, Brian, you think this is big enough to really think so? Have you seen on the TV? On, on, can I see it while it's recording? <laughs> It'll, it'll come out bigger on the computer. I don't see a thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's probably on the other side. Oh, there we go. All right, this is a different <laughs> subject. So we'll try again. Do you have a class after this? Or do you have to run for another class? I don't know. Great, we'll be able to talk. Okay. Um, so the absolute zero. Okay, now what are these things? So magnitude, I'm going to say this really quickly. Magnitude means there's a number. Because when you're going through male or female, there's no number. But if you say how many inches and how tall you are, how many pounds you weigh, or what's your income, then there's mag magnitude means there's a number. Equal intervals means that every interval on the scale corresponds physically to the same thing no matter where you are along the scale. But that doesn't make any sense to anybody, so I have to give an example of that. But equal intervals means that there's an equal, that every interval on the scale. So for example, when you're measuring somebody's height, you're going from one foot to two feet to three feet to four feet, to zero feet, you're going to start out a foot here, this foot, and this foot is the exact same foot. A foot's a foot, no matter if you're 25 feet here measuring, the foot's a foot. A dollar's a dollar, a second is a second, a degree is a degree. But of course, there are examples of scales which do not have equal intervals. So some of you might even know that from this poll. The Richter scale. The Richter scale. If you measure earthquakes, when you go from a three, which is a very, very mild earthquake, to a four, which is, I don't know, maybe you might see the thing shake a little bit. So from a three to a four, there's a small jump. But from a four to a five, a five is a pretty severe earthquake, and a five would be like, you know, you might see cracks in the wall. So from a four to a five is a bigger jump. And if it's from a five to a six, it's a giant jump. This jump goes up by 30, I think. And from a six to a seven, well, seven is, is like the whole city's falling down, as you just know, as you just read about, as you just heard about. Okay, so that's, that would be an example of a scale which lacks equal intervals. But most scales that we are familiar with do have the property of equal intervals. Okay, so now, so if you put together those three different properties, and again, of course, there's a question you have to, have to ask me, because that goes without saying. Well, it doesn't go without saying, I'm saying it, but you have to ask me questions. So the types of scales, you put together those three different scales, and uh, those three different properties, and you end up with four different scales. The first scale is called a nominal scale. The second scale is called a Interval scale or ordinal scale, something like that. Ordinal scale. The third scale is called an interval scale. And the fourth scale, which is the most common scale and has the best scale and the one we use the most, is called a ratio scale. Now, what's a nominal scale? A nominal scale has none of these properties. It has no numbers. If it has no numbers, it can't have the other things for sure. It's like, what's a nominal scale? When you put somebody into a category, male, female, black, white, uh, GM, or Ford, you don't, there's no number. That's a nominal scale. Just put a name, the word nominal, the word name. You're putting a name on something. What's an ordinal scale? Well, an ordinal scale only has numbers, but, it does, but it's, it's lacking the other two properties. It means it's lacking equal intervals. What's an example of an ordinal scale? The earthquake, the Richter scale, as Paul said a few minutes ago, because an earthquake of three is lower than an earthquake of four, but you can't really say how much lower. Four is lower than five, but you can't really say how much lower because you don't really, because the scale is changing all the time. So a normal scale just really focuses on the order of things, but it doesn't give you the exact you know, little details. An interval scale has both magnitude and equal intervals, but it's missing the absolute zero. And an example of an interval scale would be um, Fahrenheit temperature, centigrade temperature, because there already you go from three to four degrees and four to five degrees and five to six, it's always one degree is one degree, but it's missing absolute zero because, yeah, maybe I never explained it. Absolute zero means that, I'm sorry, I don't think I explained it. Absolute zero means that when it says zero on the scale, it means there's nothing there. So for example, if somebody has zero dollars in a bank account, it means there's no dollars in a bank account. If somebody has zero children, it means they have no children. If somebody has, uh, if an object is zero inches long, it means it has no length. All right? But when it's zero degrees outside, it doesn't mean there's no heat in the atmosphere. It's cold, but it's still some, there's some temperature. You get, look, you get minus five degrees, minus 10 degrees, you can get colder than that. So something like Fahrenheit or centigrade thermometer scale, and maybe other examples, 
we uh, do have 